important to get out in front of this one. Um, first and foremost, uh, I'd like to say that any questions concerning Tabor Pepper, I defer to Richard Hightower. All right? I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> All right. See you guys. So how are we doing? One of the best parts about Trey is, is that he handles himself like um, he's wise beyond his years. So he really approaches every day um, like it's a new day and he's trying to get the most out of himself. It's, it's been refreshing to see uh, a young guy that you invest in really attack it that way. Um, and so that's, he, he's pretty consistent. Um, he doesn't get too high or too low, which is what you'd want from a, a, a player at that position. Uh, his his days are long. Um, the exact the exact time I couldn't tell you in the morning, but he starts his day off with a uh, Rich Scangarillo, grinding out um, before meetings. Then then he has a, a position meeting, um, part of which they extend because they utilize the special teams time. Um, then he goes through the entire day like everyone else. Um, but then you know part of being a rookie, especially at that position is that he can't, you know, when walkthrough's done all the way at like 7 p.m., he, uh, he can't just go home. He has to get um, in, in the meeting room with Rich, go over what we did in the walkthrough, and um, continue and get a head start on the next day's stuff. Because, again, at that position, you have, you're in charge of every other player on the field at the same time with you. So there's a lot of play calls. We have a lot of wordy wordy things um, that he has to really nail down so everyone else can execute their jobs. You can see the, the completions and the incompletions, but in terms of the decision making when he's running zone reads or doing you know, checks at the line of scrimmage, even if he is allowed to do that yet, how, how is he from that perspective stuff that the, that the line might not see? Um, well, it's a work in progress, which is what you would, you know, if you're doing anything that's really that difficult, you probably shouldn't be lead at it you know, right from the jump. So th that's one of the reasons why we have to rep it so much, rep all the plays so much is because it isn't easy. So um, he's right where we'd want him in terms of he's in the developmental stage um, of all of it. Uh, some plays are good, some plays are bad, but we try to focus on the bad so there can be more good. How much does Trey Lance work on his throwing mechanics? He seems so refined in that area for a guy who didn't throw much in college. Well, that was a big point of emphasis for him um, this offseason, those 40 days away specifically, where we had some things um, from a footwork standpoint that we were asking him to do that, that he hadn't really done. Um, and he, th that was the, the exciting part when we were talking about when he came back from his 40 days. He really put that time in because we told him, hey, listen, you're going to have to worry about all this other stuff um, in terms of defenses, um, formations, reads, all of those things, so you don't have time to really work on it. So to answer your question, he really put in a lot of work in the summer, um, so he came back, he knew what it should look like and it should feel like, and, and so now when he has a mistake in, in that area, he's, we, we can articulate it to him and be like, hey, and he knows exactly what we're talking about and can fix it and move forward. How, how is he vocally? How does the man's presence, the base of the board, is it for? Um, yeah, no, there's, there's a, a, an element of confidence that um, is unique. Um, he, I wouldn't say he's, he's loud or boisterous. He has a com confident swag that I think really appeals to, to players. Um, he knows the pressure that's on him like any other player. Um, uh, so he really is really comfortable in his own skin, I'd say. Um, and he's getting to the point where... He, he can correct other players, which from a coach's perspective is all you're looking for. You want a coach on the field. You know, the, the, per, the p person that a receiver is going to listen to much more than a coach is the guy that's throwing him the ball. So he's, he's been very good with that, and um, I think a lot of the guys respond to that. Robert Sally used to talk about eye positioning all the time. How, how are Trey's eyes in terms of, you know, looking off defenders? I know Jonas Griffith got it, that, I think, once. 
uh, kind of sunk back on a ball and picked him off. How are his eyes in terms no, of that? That's a, that's a great question because it's the NFL game, the transition from college to the NFL, it, it's magnified. You don't really you – know, it's a game of inches, so you do have to manipulate zoning defenders, and there's plays that he's good with it. There's plays that he's bad with it. He's in the developmental stage. The good news is is that he is able to do it and is wanting to do it and working to get better at it every day. What a decision for Colton McGivitz to get reps with the first team? And what are you seeing at the right guard position so far? Well, there's the, one of the best things that we have going on our entire offense is the depth and versatility of our offensive linemen. So we've, we've been very mindful to um, really help facilitate the competition by rotating different guys in. And Colton McKivitz is a, is a guy that has a lot of reps at guard from last year, but missed in a training camp. So you, you always want to give guys opportunities. And today was his. Um, we've been playing Tom Compton. We've been playing Dan Brunskill. Um, we've been playing a lot of guys in there. We'll, uh, you know, at some point, we'll put Banks in there. And they'll, they'll all compete so that they have an equal opportunity to earn that job. How is Banks uh, progressed here through the first two days with, with, with pads on? Um, he's, he's doing a good job really attacking, um, the technique of that, that we ask our linemen to do. Um, a lot of the stuff that we ask linemen to do is a little different than they're used to. So he's attacking it. Um, but with that, you, you'll jump off side. Sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll be a little sloppy in your technique because you're not used to it. It's that he can't turn his brain off right now, um, before he goes and plays. So that, that's something that. Uh, you know, we're not really concerned about it at all. It's a natural progression um, that all players really go through. Trey is only getting, with the exception of that one rep yesterday, only working with the second team, but it seems like he's throwing to a lot of starters, whether it be George or, or Brandon. How, how important is that to, or is that an emphasis of you guys, and how important is it for him to build chemistry with those guys? No, so uh, I think that alludes to a question that you had um, before, but that that's a, a very perceptive question. What we try to do as coaches um, and what, what Coach Shannon does um, with, his, with the entire offensive staff and what he, what he asked me to do as well is put a lot of pressure on position coaches to read through the script, see the different opportunities. You know, we have the plays and we know the defenses. The players don't. So we, we try to put, you know, hey, um, George Kittle needs a wide and go rep versus man coverage. Well, hey, instead of dictating the entire practice and all the people's reps for George, we ask coaches to say, hey, George, you're going to go in with the twos or the threes. It doesn't really matter um, to get that opportunity. It's just one of the ways we try to um, work on individual skill sets. Hey, Sermon, seems to be getting a lot of reps with the starters. What have you seen from him, and how do you uh, assess a running back without tackling? Well, that, that's a great question, too, because it's, there's not an easy answer, um, but – been pumped with Trey because he's come a long way in a short period of time with us in terms of our techniques. You know, we, uh, we're, we, we run around the corner a ton and, um, realistically a majority of all the, all the stuff that he did in college was from the gun. So you're at home, you're under center. And when you're under center, you have to listen to a snap count. Um, when you're in gun, you can kind of get away from looking at the ball snapped and not really going off the snap count. So there, those types of things, he's been growing and growing. Um, and then your second part of the question? Just how do you uh, assess running backs in general? Okay, the, yeah. That was the part of the question that I was fired up about. Um, <laughs> the, it, it, is, it is hard. You, you, there's no shortcut. You really have to um, magnify um, all the reps uh, in, when you're not going to the ground on, hey, where's his balance? Is he, is, are his shoulders over his over his to is the center of gravity right at the point of contact um and you can take that to a certain degree but you know that's what's crazy about last year having no preseason because we for running backs we really rely on those games to to see how they not necessarily their yards per carry or if their stats were good but how are they on contact um with defenders um dragging on them are they going to get extra yards are they a guy that hey, if it's blocked for three, he'll get five. So there, you can take it to um, – you can only take it so far. We do the best that we can. Um, but then there's a lot of it that you have to wait until people can actually tackle you. How does, how does Mitchell look, Elijah Mitchell, look with that? Like it's, what are you seeing out of him besides that he's fast? Uh, he's, uh, that's one of the, my favorite parts of his game. So uh, 
whether that was coincidental or not, um, there, when you watch him and you watch him on pra- at practice, you can see at the point of contact that he, he is um, striking defenders. It, we, we call it shoulder punch. Um, uh, you've seen Jeff Wilson do it a bunch. So the, in, in practice, we see great vision, and we see a guy that is um, not afraid of contact and should be um, pretty good after it. But again, uh, we'll, we'll let him show us all that um, when the preseason, preseason game starts. Coach, with the preseason game on a week and a half away, what's the biggest improvement you want to see from the offense before that first game? Um, from the offense in its entirety is uh, you'd like to have um, a little more flawless fundamental football, uh, something we're always striving for. You know, um, part of our job as coaches is to find different ways that we can maximize the potential of players. There's a lot of guys that are getting better um, uh, at individual things, but you want to see people work together as a group. Um, you want to see people improve on the, on the cadence and snap count. That's something you hear us talk about a lot because our defense is so good at um, defending uh, against offenses when you know, they're, they're probably the best D-line that we see all year is jumping the cadence and stuff. So th- those types of things, you just really want guys to continue to progress um, uh, and do it as a unit. May I ask you about the shirt? What was John's reaction when he saw everybody? With the oh, shirt? this was a practice surprise. So uh, I, I actually, there was a um, couple guys that were really excited to put it on in the office before we went out. Um, and I had to go, I kind of was scurrying around offices, like hiding it so he didn't see it. Um, but yeah, I, the first thing I, when I saw him was I asked him, where's your shirt? And he said, because uh, we thought it'd be kind of funny for him to wear his own name on his back. But um, he, I, I think, you know, John's a, an un- unbelievable human being. and. Um, there's not too many Hall of Famers that you even uh, have the chance to know. And I think all the players and coaches alike uh, uh, re- really feel that way. And I think he felt just tremendous gratitude and a little bashful. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not a look at me guy. And there's a lot of people wearing his name today. Final day of install? Um, last night was. Today was the final application of our install. Um, so it, it was the seventh day, and uh, um, now after their player day off, then we'll kind of tighten up and um, look at our players and continue to work on stuff that we're bad at. Half out from the first preseason game. At, at what point do you guys start to sit down and say or divvy up reps and how, how you want to evaluate that? We, we, we try not to get ahead of ourselves. Look, we're, we're telling players that they have to go and attack every day. So it would be it wouldn't be responsible for us if we're making decisions um, in, in prematurely in advance of that. So really, we're, we're th- that stuff comes a couple days before the preseason game, not until then, because we don't want to shortchange all the competition from here till then. Thanks, Mike. Here we go. Wow. feel bad for D'Amico having to follow that. You know? <laughs>